Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Let us pray. Another moment in thy presence, O Heavenly Father. We have waited for this moment. Last week was strength renewed and today we seek the same. We did not see some things that have happened. But by our faith, we see thee always. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to get up and to come to be with you right now. Blood is still running warm in our veins. Air is still inhaling and exhaling. Heart is still beating. And the joy of our salvation grows each and every day. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for waiting for us to come to be present in your midst. Goodness and mercy have indeed followed us and also have led us to this place. Help us to praise thy name and to worship. Help us to once again Sing a song, pray a prayer, hear the word, bring an offering. We thank you, God, for saving our souls and bringing us into the kingdom. We are children belonging to you. Bless these who come this morning and we thank you for the strength you've given to allow us to move about even with the aid of a cane or walker. We thank you, God, that you helped us this morning. Now we know what it means to have been fearfully and wonderfully made by your hand. Though this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we've got another building waiting on us. We've come to thank you this morning. We're headed for that new building. There'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more trouble. Receive our worship this morning for we do it in the name of your son Jesus for his sake. <laughs> Amen. Those of you who will and those of you who can, let us stand to our feet, sing our hymn of praise found on the back of our worship hymnal, Blessed Assurance.
most holy and righteous God. We come this morning giving you thanks and praises for all the things that thou hast done for us. Father, we just thank you for last night's rest. Oh, Father, we thank you that thou did awaken us this morning and that thou has led us to this place where we can worship, pray, and hear a word from you. Oh, Father, we, we come asking that thou would be with our pastor this morning. As he deliver words from on high, we ask that thou would prick our hearts, that we might remember when we first saw the light. Father, we ask that I would look upon this choir, the musicians, as they lead us in song as we worship. Father, we ask that I would look upon the ushers, all the auxiliaries of this church. Help us that we may be able to bind ourselves together, that we may worship true and the one and only living God. Yes. Father, we come on behalf of this waiting congregation. Father, we ask that thou would just touch us, open our hearts, open our minds, and entomb them to thy presence. Father, we ask a special blessing this morning on those that are bereaved. Yes. Father, you know who they are. And we ask them that I would just take your loving arms and wrap them around them, comfort them, console them. Help them, Lord, to realize that you are the master. Father, those that are sick, those that for some reason could not make it to the house of prayer today. We ask that I would just be with them as well. And Father, we ask that I would be with those that do not know the saving power of your son, Jesus yes. Christ. And Father, there will come a time when we cannot utter words to thee that we will say our last prayer utter our last words. And we just ask that thou would just would be with us. <clears throat> Lead us to that house that has not been made by man's hands, but eternally yours. In the name of thy sweet son, Jesus. <coughs> Amen.
Our responsive reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Let us read responsively. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Or what man is there of you whom if he his son asks bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Let us hear God as he speaks to our heart and to our mind out of the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. St. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect.
First, giving honor to God, Pastor Chase, officers, members, our virtual viewers, and to our friends, good morning. Good morning. The thought for today, never forget yesterday, but always live for today. You never know what tomorrow can bring or what or who it can take away. The announcements. Our Zoom Christian education classes are as follows. Sundays, 11 a.m. with Sister Elaine Hyman. Please visit our church's website at www.cbcdurham.net for more information and to attend. At this time, I do not have the names of any visitors. If you are visiting with us this morning for the first time, would you please stand, give your name, church affiliation, and remain standing until you have been made welcome. To our virtual viewers that have logged in with us this morning, thank you so much for choosing Community Baptist Church as your place to worship this morning. We pray that you will find our service to be inspirational, spiritual, and uplifting. Please do log on to worship with us again. Thank you. Let the church say amen. Amen. Indeed, grateful to our Heavenly Father for the privilege to come again to share in worship as we prepare to serve him each and every week and each and every day. We thank Sister Fletcher for giving to us the notices. We do encourage you each and every week to share in the learning of God's word together. Mm -hmm. We ask that you would do so today at 11 o'clock with Sister Elaine Hyman as the teacher and facilitator. If you do not have a Sunday school quarterly, we ask that you would see Sister Beverly West, that you may get your name on the <coughs> roster, that you may receive a Sunday school quarterly for study. <coughs> things have changed, as you know, and we have to do things virtually now, so it involves more training and study of God's word. We move back physically as we walk with the Holy Spirit's guidance as we return to the normalcy that our Heavenly Father would have us to, to live and walk therein. You know, we as human beings, we get off track after a while. Mm -hmm. We're like a pendulum. We swing this way all the way to the right and then we come back to the middle and we swing all the way to the left. And in every generation and sometimes every hundred years, the Holy Spirit <laughs> has to guide mankind back into the path of righteousness because we get off track. We walk with God for a while and then after a while, there's a Garden of Eden waiting for us. And there's a choice that we make because we are tempted from time to time. And we thank the Holy Spirit for guiding and leading and never letting us go, that he can lead us back into the paths of righteousness. For sometimes we create our own righteousness, which is not the righteousness of God. So we thank God for his leadership. We thank God for his guidance. And we thank God for those of you who are spiritual and those of you who are redeemed, who know the Lord. And you can hear the Lord speak to you that we can walk together as dear children of the kingdom. So we thank God for, for that. We are happy to see all of you this morning present. And we thank God for the ability that God has continued to give you to rise each and every Sunday to come and to be in his presence. We thank God again for you, Sister Bass, for weathering the storm in your life Amen. and that God has docked your ship here once more, that you can come and be in worship with us. Of course, there are sisters in the faith like Sister Cole who knows how to guide her ship wherever it goes. <laughs> and she's here every Sunday. And of course, over here, there's another vessel, Sister Gear, and we know that they walk in God's house, but we thank God that he's able to bring you here Amen. 
this morning to be present in his, his midst. So we are looking for any information because we know that you lost your brother and you know that these funeral arrangements take a little time these days. So we wait in prayer and we will be with you, of course, uh, during that, that time. We ask that you would continue to pray for Sister Phyllis Garrison who had surgery some time ago and she's recuperating well and also for Sister Carolyn Williams who had surgery this week. We ask that you would pray for, for them. It saddens our heart, of course, to hear of the, not loss, but those whom we say gone on. And we are sad to hear of the passing of Sister Tanja Dixon. And we ask that you would pray for the family. We have been in contact with them and we talked for a few hours yesterday the arrangements, of course, have not been made, but we do understand that Holloway Funeral Home may have her body. So we ask that you would check with the website of that funeral home to learn of the arrangements. But let us continue to pray for her and her children, her mother and her family. We thank you for the life of every soul that comes this way and works out their soul salvation with fear, trembling, and joy amongst us. And as it has been said, today is the only day that's promised to you if we can see it. But we're only here for a moment. And our greatest joy is the fact that once we die, we shall rise to be with him and never depart again. So continue to pray one another. God bless you.
Let the church say amen. Because I want you to stop. I'm just making sure you can. Yes, sir. Uh, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Can't go up there without your holiness. Amen. Search the house now. Everybody satisfied? Everybody satisfied? Everybody satisfied over here? Everybody satisfied over here? I might not be satisfied. guided by Christ. God loves a happy bunch of folk. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can serve him better when you're happy. And the best happiness is the happiness that he gives you. <coughs> this joy I give. World didn't give it. World can't take it away. Amen. Nothing else can give you that kind of joy. Yes, uh, Jacob's well can't do it. Living water can. I'm so glad that we know and we don't forget why we come here. Amen. I like it just like, just like that. Have you ever looked at the Sermon on the Mount? Any time in your life, that's where the text comes from, chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. Have you ever looked at it? Go home and look at it. 
read it again, three chapters, I think, five, six, seven. Pull out the hardest thing in the sermon that God wants you to deal with in your life. That is the life that he gives you. The hardest thing in the Sermon on the Mount. A lot of easy things we can do. A lot of easy things we can handle. As a matter of fact, we have to learn and not forget that God doesn't Leave it up to us to determine how we going to be Christian. <clears throat> Christianity is a faith that God does not give us to develop ourselves. He has developed it for us. The difference between sheep and goats, wheat and tares, spiritual and flesh, is that there are some who try their best to be a Christian the way God determines. And then there are some who like to make their own Christianity. Convenience, satisfaction, like and dislike. God does not allow us to do that. Some things are easy. You read that sermon when he says, when you pray, be not as the hypocrites. They pray long prayers, thinking that by much speaking they will be heard. Well, that's easy to, to get over. And, and, and for some of us, we, we think that we're Christian, but we're really not because in some services, some of us got to comment on everything in the service. We got to get up at every point and say something. All you have to do is stop and do what you're told to do. When it comes to giving, when you give your alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand do. Some of us got to let everybody know how good they are. My ideas, my plans. All you have to do is just don't bring no plans or ideas, just bring your sin sick soul. And let the Holy Ghost change you. And then show you what the Lord would have us to do. When we fast, some of us walk around and we want people to think that we're so holy because we're bearing all these burdens. And Jesus said, well, when you fast, don't, don't be like the hypocrites because they come in with all this worry on their face, like they're carrying such a heavy load and, and everything is so, so concerning to them. Jesus said, when you fast, just wash your face. Put on some Jergen lotion. Make yourself look good. And, and, and don't let folk know what you're doing. It's none of their business. It's between you and God. See, that's easy to do. But then, but then there are some things that are harder to do in this sermon. Be, be, because, because Jesus does not allow us to determine what Christianity is to be for us or anybody. He determines it. You've heard them say of old, thou shalt not kill, but I, I say unto you. Jesus said it. He didn't ask anybody's opinion. Jesus said it. If you hate your brother without a cause, you commit murder in your heart. You've heard them say of old, thou shalt not kill, Commit adultery, but, but, but I say unto you, if you lust after something don't belong to you, you do it in your, your heart. See, he doesn't, he doesn't allow us to define or determine 
what Christianity is. If you read the Sermon on the Mount, he does all the talking. He does all the defining. He does all the categorizing. He does all the qualification. He does it. You, 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 you heard them say by them, of, oh, I for an I, two for two. But I say. And then he comes to this, this text, which is the hardest thing for you and I to do. You've heard them say of old, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemy. Now, you know, brothers and sisters, by the time Jesus got to that part of the sermon on that hill, some folk got up and went home. So, so, some, some folk, I, I, I got the roast on and it's almost done. I got to get out of here. I, I got a lamb that my husband done slain and I got to go home and fix it up. I, I got some wheat and some barley that got to be shocked and, a, and some bread has to be baked. I got to go. You know back in those days, Jesus was dealing with those things that you find out by listening to him talking. And here he comes telling the multitude on that mountain, you have heard them say, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. You know somebody didn't like that. that, 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 that that's part of Christianity that you and I can't shake. He, he, he doesn't leave it up to us to treat our enemies like we want to. He, 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 he declares that, that you like people who like you, you speak to people who speak back to you, but you don't determine who's your enemy and you don't determine who's your friend. I do that for you. That's what he does in this, this text. He, 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 we, we, we come to the hardest thing in the Sermon on the Mount. Getting along with people. He, 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 he removes our attitude. He, he takes away our feeling. He, he, he shocks our emotions. He, he, he disturbs our being. He he, he blocks us in and doesn't allow us to determine who should be our enemy or not. He says, love your enemies, and then he defines who they are by telling us how. He says, he says um, love your enemies. Who is my enemy? Somebody that my friend don't like? Nope. Who's my enemy? Some, some, somebody that hurt somebody in my family? Nope. Who, who's my enemy? Some, 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 somebody that, 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 that I don't care too much about? No, he doesn't allow us to do that. Here's your enemy. Bless them that curse you. Here's your enemy. Do good to them that hate you. Here's your enemy. Pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. Has nothing to do with my opinion. He defines for me who is my enemy and how I'm supposed to treat them. Well, how am I supposed to treat all these people? Love them. How am I supposed to love them? Bless them. Do good to them and pray for them. Oh no, I'm about to get a brick and bust somebody up in the head. That's how we do, ain't that right? Oh no, I'm about to get on the phone and call my homies and tell my homies how I've been being treated by this dude or this girl. Ain't that how we do it? Oh no, I'm getting ready to get you back. I'm gonna stab you too. Didn't that how we do it? He does not allow that to happen. 
when it comes to following him. Because the only enemy that you and I have following Jesus are those who don't like him. Doesn't matter how they do you. Ain't that what the text said? Jesus said, love your enemies, and they kicking you everywhere they can find their foot to put. Yes, sir. He said, how you do it? Bless them. They done knocked me in the head. Do good to them. They done stomped me on the foot. Pray for them. They done talked about me behind my back. Jesus says, so? <laughs> Come on now, y'all. Come on, get it. I done pulled the hardest thing in the Sermon on the Mount to deal with in your relationship to people, and all Jesus can say is, so? They bother me on my job every day. They, they, they talk about me all day long. They, they talk about me to people who don't even know me. I go to the store and people look at me funny. I don't know them. But they done heard something about me. People lie on you, don't even know you. What Jesus said, so? The only enemies you got are the enemies that don't like me. Love your enemies. Lord, I can't do that part. I've been a Christian a long time, but I ain't flowed over there yet. I don't flow with him like that right now. I still got some deliverance. I got some more deliverance, y'all. Y'all, come on. Ain't no need you sitting up in there act like you so good. The only thing good on you right now is your hair and your clothes. But your heart needs some more deliverance. Because I know that some of us done put it up on the shelf. And I got to tell them, give them a piece of my mind. Jesus said, uh-uh. You know why? Because it's all about image. That's what it's about. Look at what Jesus said. Love your enemy. Bless do good, pray for. Why? Well, the sun shines on the just and the unjust, good and the evil. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. God sends the same stuff to your house he sends to the folk don't like you. Why? Because you're all in the same world. And you all got an answer to the same God. And then he goes a little further. How much reward should you get if you like those who like you. If you say hi to them who say hi to you. The publicans do the same thing. You know who the publicans are to us, don't you? Not Republicans. <laughs> but racist folk. People don't like us because of the way we look. They do the same thing to their family. You ain't no different than they are if you like only who you want to like, if you smile only at who you want to smile at, you'll know better than your persecutors. But if you would be perfect, it's all about image. Don't care how they treat you. You got to act like the child you belong to. Jesus said, be ye perfect, for your Father who is in heaven is perfect. How many of y'all remember getting whipped by your children, by your mom and dad? <laughs> you, know, you know why I asked that question? Because they don't beat them no more. But back in the day, Sister Fletcher, <laughs> they used to beat us to death. <laughs> you know why? You know why? It wasn't because they hated us. No. They loved us. They loved us to death, and we sometimes thought it was true. 
But you know why they disciplined us? You know why they did it? They did it because they didn't want you to what? No. What? I'm almost through. You know why mom and daddy whipped us? Because they used to say, they ain't going to mess up their clothes. They used to say, because you did wrong. But there was one other thing they used to say. And you remember what they used to say. My mom and daddy, when they whipped us, they said, you ain't going to embarrass us. You remember that? <laughs> said, you ain't going to embarrass us. And when we cut up and acted up in the community, it was what? It was like being embarrassed. You embarrassing your parents. I know some of y'all remember that. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Be perfect because your father in heaven is perfect. Because it's all about image. It's about who you belong to. It's about who bought you with a price. It's about who shed his blood on Calvary's cross for you. It's about who died for your sins. And when somebody has done that for you, you ought to act higher than those who like to wallow in the dirt. You're not dirty no more. You're clean. You're not ugly no more. You're pretty. Jesus is saying, I'm taking all of that meanness and ugliness to Calvary's cross. And I'm going to let them nail my hands and my feet. And my blood is going to be shed for you. And you're going to be cleansed and clean. And no matter how they treat you, you ought to act and you're going to act like the child you are. You belong to a perfect daddy who knows how to fight your battle. He knows all you got to do is stand still. Your daddy going to fight your battle. Don't you worry about it. Do I have a witness this morning? Who is a child of the king this morning? Who knows what it means to be a child of God? Who has stood when people have mistreated you and you have seen the hand of God, your Father, move in your life? It's all about image. Community, don't let it be said that your mouth is foul. Don't let it be said that you act ugly and cut up. Because when you come into this house every Sunday morning, you come to get some more bread, some more strength, some more goodness, some more mercy, some more kindness. You come to what? Fill up again on the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance, goodness, kindness, faith. You come. You can go back out into this world. Slap you on one cheek. Turn it in the other. Sue you for your coat. Give them your cloak all soaked. Brush you in the head. Stand still. See the salvation of God. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? I've seen him move. I've seen him open up doors. No man can shut. I've seen him shut doors. No man can open. Am I by myself this morning? I know somebody else know what I'm talking about. You've been booted. You've been scorned. You've been hurt. You've been rattled. You've been stabbed. You've been hurt. But God has made a way out of no way. Out of no way. Red God from Zion. I said, a Father that has taught me how to behave myself. I just stand still because the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. He'll fight it. He's going to win it. He's already done it. You don't have to worry about it. Amen.
Amen. It's all about image. You belong to your heavenly Father. Be perfect because He is perfect. Father, we thank you for just this morsel of bread. We feast upon it. We trust and hope, O oh Heavenly Father, that you would season it in the heart of your people. Grant them patience. Grant them assurance. Help us to walk as children of your kingdom. Help our behavior be sanctified by your grace. Give another soul eternal life. Cast thy bread upon the waters, O Heavenly Father. It will not come back void, but it shall accomplish in the heart what you have purposed. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. The doors of the church are open. If there is one here today or viewing virtually with us, we ask that you would, if you stand in need of salvation, confess in your heart your sin to the Heavenly Father. Believe that he died for you and you shall be saved. This is your moment. This is your your moment. By faith, open your heart. Someone here is praying for you right now because we know the power of prayer. We know that prayer opens doors of salvation and grace to those who dare to believe there is a God, there is a judgment. There is a consummation of history, time, and reality. Jesus did come. He did die. He did shed his blood. And he did rise from the dead. With all power in his hand. That power you can share if you only believe. Is there one? I want Is there one? Far Is there one? Away oh yes you did. From God. Yes you did. It's time to come on home. Now it's time. I'm coming. Turn around. Home. It's time to leave it alone. Come For sake. Forsake your weary ways. Come on. We're waiting for you. He loves you. He always has. I'm coming. That's why he died. Yes, sir.
Church, let us come together now as we lift our tithes and offerings. I'd like to remind you of our obligation that the pastor has asked for our church anniversary, $300. If you haven't given yet, you can give throughout in installments if you would like throughout the year. If you've already given or if you choose to give it all at one time, it's all well and fine. As we lift our tithes and offerings, we have to be responsible for the house of the Lord. As you all know, we have other things that are going to take place here at the house of God, and we need everyone to give their tithes and offerings appropriate so that we can do what needs to be done in the house of God. I look at some of you all's houses. I pass by them. They look fabulous. You got your homes, your yours looking really nice. But God said put his house first, yes. not yours. Let us pray. Father, we thank thee for the privilege of bringing an offering to your presence and to your sanctuary. Receive our offering that we bring and we ask that thou would help us to continue to grow in giving through thy word. Help us to listen to your commandments, to become obedient to your will. Bless us now in Jesus' name. And we thank thee for blessings already. Amen. Giving God's way, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? Malachi 3, verse 8. Community Baptists and friends, you may bring your tithes and offerings to the storehouse. Due to the COVID-19, Community Baptist Church will be open to receive your offerings each Tuesday from 12 o'clock p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You may also send your tithes and or offerings by mail. Please mail to Community Baptist Church or 821 Barbie Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. You may also give your tithes and offerings online. Please visit our website at cbcdurham.net backslash giving. eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. <laughs> 